Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, got another tutorial here at AllieMonroe.com. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to go over how to create a polygon cartooner style hammer. Uh, a hammer is the very first 3D object I ever learned how to make, so I figured it'd be a pretty good tutorial to start off with. So what we're going to want to do is start with a fresh scene of 3D Studio Max. So what we'll do is go up to the uh, 3D Studio Max icon on the top left, and click Reset, and uh, save your work if you're working on something. In my case, I'm not and click reset yes alright so what we're going to do want to do is make sure we go over to our modify panel and make sure we're under the geometry tab so this left icon here the next left icon and make sure we're under standard primitives and click on box what we're going to do is drag out our our box here cover up four grids or squares on the grid and we'll drag up the height now this is going to be our handle so by all means, uh, follow along uh, if you like, but uh, feel free to design this hammer in whatever way you feel. So drag it out and adjust the height and let go. And what we have here is a, just a cube, and we have a bounding box around here. I don't prefer to have my bounding box turned on, so if you have this and you want to turn it off, you can just hit the hotkey J, and that will turn that off. Uh, I'm going to turn our wireframe on so I can see what we're working with by hitting F4. Right. I'm going to go over to the Modify panel, which is the next icon over from the left. And you can see that we're under Box. We can adjust the amount of height steps that we want here. We're just dragging in, uh, this scroll button here. We can add in a whole bunch, but uh, we could do it this way. I'm going to do it a little bit different way, just to show you another way of adding in segments for your height. But you can also add in segments for your width and your length. So what we're going to do is right click on the word box up here and convert it to an editable poly. Alright, so once we did that we've seen that we came up with a whole bunch of other options for, for this. And it may seem overwhelming at first, but it's uh, as you get familiar with it you'll, feel, you'll see that it's not really all that much going on here. So what we're going to want to do is select the edges of this and we're going to divide it evenly. Uh, but four different steps. So we're going to click on the plus here and we're going to go into edge mode. You also could have uh, scrolled to the very top and just clicked on any of these. This will be border, polygon, element mode, vertex mode, and edge mode. And edge mode is what we want. So what we'll do is I'm going to turn on, press F3 here so we can see through our model. And we're going to click and drag. Oh, I seem to have my circle selection here. Uh, if you want, you just go on up to the top left here, click and hold, and you could choose a different style of selection. We're going to go with rectangle. We're going to click and drag around these edges, and uh, if they're selected, you'll see that they're in red. So what we're going to want to do is click Connect. And if we click on the box on the right-hand side, we'll have a little bit more control over what this tool will do for us. So we're going to click on the settings. All right, move this aside, and right now we have one segment, zero pinch, and zero slide. So watch what happens when I drag the slide button. You see that the division moves up and down the handle of the hammer. All right. And if we pinch it, you can't really see it because what it's trying to do is pinch the, uh, the amount of segments that you have. So what, if I drag it, you'll see nothing happening right now. I'll set these back to zero by right-clicking on the scroll. And we'll set our segments to two. So as I drag the pinch, you'll see that they come closer. Or if we drag it into the positive, they go further apart. So what we're going to want to do is divide this into, let's say, five different segments evenly spaced. So our pinch would have to be zero. And we'll set our segments to five hit OK. So now we have enough vertice control over our handle here that we can start kind of sculpting it into the form of a handle. So like I said, I'm going to go with a cartoonish style. So I went into my vertex mode. I'm going to click and drag around the vertices. I'm going to scale them down at the bottom. Just kind of form out the shape of a, a handle here. So exaggerated proportions for cartoons. Maybe a bit of a square tip, triangle tip at the bottom here. Scale this in for where the hand would uh, clasp it. And it'll make it really tight there. Okay? And maybe from a different view, I'll start forming out maybe a bit of a curve to this. So pull this out. Okay? So next what we want to do is start working on the metal part of the hammer. So this here would be like the plastic end of it. So what we're going to do is going to go to the polygon selection mode. And when we're in this mode, you can see that we're actually selecting 
what's called faces. All right, we're going to select the top one and we're going to hit the extrude button. What the extrude button will do is add an extra section to the top of the of the handle here. And under the settings, we have a few options. We can uh, extrude by the group, uh, by polygon, or along the normals of it. So we're going to go with by polygon. Since we only have one selected, had we had two selected, it would have extruded them both separately and we would have been able to control them independently. And you'll see that technique here in a moment when we start doing the back end of the hammer. So we're go by polygon and adjust the height as I see fit. And OK. So let's go to the start working on the back of the hammer here. This here will be the back and this part will be the front. The problem is, is um, the back of the hammer has two sort of teeth that come out at the back. And right now we only have one face. So if we were to extrude that, we'd only get one coming out the back. So we need to divide this in a way so that we can have two faces. So what we'll do is we'll go into the edge mode and we'll select cut. If you scroll down here and just click cut, we're going to start drawing out the way we want this topology to flow. So we're going to start from one of these corners. We'll click here, click in the middle, and up to the top. And we're going to stop there because I plan on doing a little bit of work here at the top. But at the end of the day, we want to make sure that we only ever have four sided faces. But we'll get to that in a moment. And we're also going to grab from this neck piece here to right up and meet that triangle. Okay, so what we're going to do now is go to polygon selection mode, and you'll see now that we have two different faces we can select. So we're going to select both by holding control and clicking on the other one, and we can hit the extrude button. So, but this is where we can start using by polygon mode, and we adjusted, we're only adjusting the height right now so that they're kind of staying together, but right now they are two separate boxes being pushed out from the, the back of the hammer. So we're going to pull this out to where we feel be the end of the teeth, so maybe somewhere around there. And what we can do is hit R or go up to the scale button. We can start scaling these down. We're going to flatten them out a little bit, maybe elongate them a little bit. All right, but now we need to add a bit of a curve to them. So what we'll do is go to our edge mode and we'll select the edges much like we did for the neck of this model. So we'll use square selection and just click and drag around these four all these edges here that run long lengthwise. Just make sure they're all selected by hitting F3. All right, to come out of uh, wireframe mode, we'll just hit F3 again, and we'll hit the connect button. This time, I don't think we need five. We'll go with uh, four should do. Hit OK. All right, we'll switch up to vertex mode. And we'll go into our side view and trying to add a bit of a curved profile. What I did here is I put my mouse over whatever view I want to enlarge. I clicked here, so I'm using my left view, and I held Alt and hit W, and that will enlarge that view for us. So what we want to do is just kind of click and drag around these vertices, and I'm using hotkeys to move through my scale, rotate, and move tool. Uh, Q, W, E, R, T, Y, chord. Oh. Go back to my side view here. Uh, I guess a T in 3D Studio Max is a hotkey for your top view. Okay, so select these, hit W for move, and just kind of move these down a little bit. And I'll select the last four rows and keep moving them down, even rotate them a little bit. And it all depends on how much of a style you want to this. You want it to really curve around. I think I'll really bring mine down at the bottom here. Okay. All right, so that should work for us. If you want, you can scale these down individually on the sides. Switch this back to view. Scale these down on the side. Stuck in a different 